Okay, so now we're ready to start part two of this block and we're going to sew them together in squares of four. So I want to take four identical blocks, meaning all four here if you have the kit that have the green inside border. Okay, I got some clover clips which I love to use instead of pens so I don't poke myself to death. And I'm gonna take two of these, okay? It doesn't matter which direction because it's all the same. Okay, I'm gonna take two of these and this corner down here, let me re rephrase this. Okay, so I'm going to take two of these, and it really doesn't matter which direction you put them in. I'm going to try to do them in direction of how I laid the fabric. So you see this corner down here was the last of the large ones that we put on because it's on top. It's on top of that fold, and it's on top of that fold. So I'm just going to do the, use that as a guideline. So that block is going to be kind of in the same place on all of these. So I can rearrange them that way. But it really doesn't matter. You can be unique. You can sew them together however you like. There's really no right or wrong. So I'm going to take two of these and I'm going to flip it over right sides together. And this is the side we're going to sew on. So I want to line these up. Again, you can either pin these or use clover clips and make sure that everybody's lined up because we did such a good job cutting them they're automatically going to line up real nice okay okay so now I'm going to take it to the machine so now I've got a bobbin with white thread down below you don't need a lot of thread so I'm actually taking this opportunity to use up some of my uh, bobbins that have just a little bit of thread left over. This is a good opportunity to use some of that up. And I put on a quarter inch foot on my machine. That'll just help make it a little bit easier for me to guide this as I sew. is up against that little guide right here. So I'm just going to take the first one off. Make sure it's still lined up and I'm going to place it underneath this I don't want to start off the edge I want to actually start on the block and I'm just gonna sew a couple of stitches and then I'm gonna back tack all the way to the edge and then I'm gonna sew forward stop take my next clip off sew forward slow my machine down a little bit and that's still lined up and now I'm going to continue on until I'm done and then I'm going to back tack. Now it's a little hard to see but there we go and I'm going to cut my thread. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open it up and that is pretty good for me. It's not 100% perfect on the point but it's good enough for me. I'm going to take that as a win. Okay. Close is good for me. Okay, so now we're going to press the seam. And with the magic of TV, poof, there's a the press seam. And you can tell I pressed my seam open. All right, that's going to give us the least amount of bulk throughout this project. And it's going to make it easier to sew the last two blocks on as well. So press your seam open. Okay, so now I'm going to put this one aside and I'm going to do the same thing to these two. All right, I'm going to line them up like so. I'm going to put my pin in the middle, a pin on the left, and a pin on the right. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put this first part and it does move a little bit when I take off the pen so I gotta put that down underneath the needle not off the edge I want it to be on the fabric and I'm gonna stitch a couple stitches 
Then I'm going to back tack all the way to the edge and then I'm going to go forward. And we're just going to sew these two together. There we go. A little bit more. And the last one. And the same thing, we're going to back tack a little bit. Okay, and let's see how close we got. Now, if my point's too far away, then I'll have to take it out and do it again. You know what? That's, that's, that's pretty close. That's actually closer than the first one. So I'm going to go with it because in my world, it doesn't have to be perfect. I am a perfectionist, but in my sewing, I have to realize that sometimes I can't get it absolutely perfect. And that's super close. I'm not going to worry about it. So now I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and I'm going to press my seam open. So I'm happy with those. So now I've got these two sections sewn together. I'm going to get this little thread off of here. And now I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. And I'm going to figure out which direction I want these guys to go. And I think that's the direction. And I'm going to flip it over. Right sides together. Just like that. And now I'm going to attach and sew on the bottom side. So now we need to be a little bit more careful trying to line up our seams. So you can see this on camera. So where I press these seams open, I can actually match them and put a clip. Okay. Now I can come over here and try to match the middle, even though there's no real seam there. And then hopefully my ends will match and they do. I'm going to get two more clips. Then I'm going to come in the middle and kind of line those up. And if I do, the end should line up as well. There you go. Okay. So now we're also going to sew these together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. Using my quarter inch foot. So make sure those little guys line up nicely, put them under the needle, not off the edge of the fabric. You want it on the edge right here. Make a couple stitches, back tack all the way to the end and then go forward and let's sew these together with our quarter inch seam allowance. Now I've got this here and I got to make sure I keep that seam down and if it starts to lift, I'll lift my foot and make sure that it goes flat underneath my foot. Okay. Just to keep the bulk down of the cent of that center seam. Okay. And we're going to go all the way to the end and then we're going to back tack. forward a little and whoops and then trim. Okay. And let's see how we did. Fingers crossed. I'll take it. That center line is pretty much spot on and I think it looks good. This one's off just a teeny weeny bit. I think it looks fine. No one's going to notice that in the block anyway, if it's off just a smidgen, but that center line is spot on. So I'm going to take it. Now I want to turn it over. This is going to be a little challenging, but now I want you to press this center seam open all the way up and I'll meet you right back here. Okay. We got it. You see there? So I've got this seam still flat and then I pressed this one in the center open. Okay. So now you have the first one done. Now put that one aside. You can see it there. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to the second block. And this block has the taupe on the inside. If you have the kit, 
So I'm just going to arrange them the same way with kind of this last piece on the bottom left corner, just because that's my personal preference, but you can do it however you want. Same technique. So let's take the top two, put them right sides together. This is the sew side. Let's line them up and sew them together. All right. So I'm going to put one in the center, one on the left. This one's not lined up according to the edge, so I'm going to take those back off and I'm going to line them up better. So I've got one on the end, one on the center, and one on that end. And now you know what we're going to do? We're going to sew this together with a one quarter inch foot. Okay. So I've got that again. I'm not off the fabric. I'm on it. I'm going to make a couple forward stitches and then back tack. Lock that in place, then sew it forward. Stop right when I get to the guide. Sew some more. And finish this off. Remember to back tack at the end. All right, like that and cut my thread take it off and let's see let's see Ooh, i'll take it i'll take it it's only a smidgen off i'll take it Dun -dun -dun. all right so now i want to press this seam open okay sometimes the center where the fabric is the bulkiest is a little challenging to get it down flat but you have to work at that a little bit. But now I've got my seam there pressed open and we'll put this to the, down to the side and we're gonna do the same thing with these two. Flip it over, right sides together. This is the sew side. So I'm gonna line them up and do the exact same thing that we've done with the other ones. This is not so hard. Once you've done one, it's kind of like you get the rhythm. And you can see right now that's not lined up right. So I'm going to undo it and try to line it up again. All right, there we go. Line it up here. There we go. Okay. So now you know what we're going to do. We're going to sew this one down, put it under on the fabric, stitch a few stitches, back tack. We'll lock it into place and stitch forward. All right, here we go. And don't forget to back tack at the end. Okay. And off we go. Let's see how close we got. Woo, that's the best one yet. That one's like right on. I'll take it. Okay, so now we're going to turn this over and I want you to press this seam open. Okay, we got that seam pressed down in the open position. All right, so now I'm going to put that down with my other half that I've done. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to flip it over right sides together. This is the sew side. Okay. Flip it over and I got to work on getting the center seam lined up. That's the most important thing on these two halves is to get that center seam. Now, if I hold it up, everything else should pretty much line up and it does. So I can quickly clip those come over here. There we go. And I'm going to clip the end and then clip the middle. All right, we're good. Ready? I'm going to double check my center. Yep. Just to make sure I'm right where I need to be. So now we're going to sew down that with our quarter inch seam allowance. Here we go. You've got this on the fabric, a couple stitches, back tack, 
And let's go forward. Yeah. Okay. And now with this one, I got to remember, I'm going to slow it down right when I start. Got to make sure that fabric goes under the edge of my foot to keep that seam flat. And go to the end and don't forget to back tack. Okay, and trim. All right, let's see what we did. Okay, moment of truth. All right, it is like just a hair off, but you know what? It's good. I am just a fraction off center and I'm not going to worry about it because that block looks good. I'm going to take it. Okay, so now I want you to turn it over and flatten this seam out with your iron. Let's press those seams open. All right, so I've got that seam pressed open and I turn it around and like I said, it's good. I am just a fraction off. No one's going to pay that close attention from a distance. It looks good and I'll know it's off a little bit, but no one else is and I'm not going to point that out to anybody. How about that? So we are done with both blocks and sewing them together. Now I'm going to switch and I'm going to go back to the embroidery machine and I'm going to show you how we're going to add quilting to both of these blocks. Okay, we're at the embroidery machine now. I have a bobbin with white thread down below and I have put a piece of poly no-show mesh stabilizer in my eight by eight inch hoop. It needs to be a little bit larger than the block in order to uh, accommodate the quilting design. So I need my eight by eight inch hoop for this one. Okay, so let's go to the screen cam and load the design. I have a Baby Lock Destiny, which is identical to the Brother Dream Machine. If you have something similar, you can follow along. I'm gonna click on embroidery. Then I'm gonna go to my flash drive because I keep all my files on a flash drive except it's not loaded in the machine. All right, so let's get that loaded. There we go. Let's click okay. Now let's go back to the flash drive and now it sees the files. So I'm gonna go to quilting through the seasons and I'm going to go to the quilting designs. Okay, so now on this block, we have two blocks to do, and we have two different quilting designs that we're gonna use. So we're going to use a floral and a stars design. But honestly, you can use whatever one you want as long as you use the right size. So I wanna do the stars first. And what you're looking for is a six by six design. So if you want to use the text on one of these, you can. It doesn't matter. You can use any one you want as long as it's a six by six inch design. I want to use the stars because it's one of my favorite ones. I'm going to click set. It's going to bring it in exactly centered and I don't need to do anything else and I don't need to add any other design. We're just going to use the quilting. So I'm going to click embroidery. Let's go back to the hoop cam. There we go. So I am going to put the color thread in the top of the machine that I'm going to use to put the quilting designs on this block. And because I really want all of this hard work to stand out, all of that fabric piecing that we did in the hoop that took such a long time, I want that to stand out. So I'm going to quilt it in a neutral ivory color that will stand out a little bit on the on the black but will blend in with everything else so put a color thread in the top of your machine that you want to do your quilting on and we'll get started on this block okay i think this this one will look nice all right so let's put that thread in the top of my machine 
and we're going to use this thread to stitch out all of the steps on this block. Okay, I'm going to put the block to the one side. I also need you to grab a piece of batting and I believe it is, let's see here. Yeah, it's a seven by seven inch piece of batting. Grab that and have that handy off to one side when we get to that step, okay? So let's put the foot down and let's stitch out the placement line for the batting. Okay, so I'm gonna put my batting down that thread out of the way and mine's a little rough cut scrap piece but it doesn't matter because it's going to still fit all around that placement line just make sure you got it covered put the foot down and I'm going to use my stylus to hold it down and let's tack down the batting with this next stitch here we go Okay, so now I want you to take your hoop off the machine and go to a table and I want you to trim away all of this excess batting from around all four sides of that stitch line and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, with that all trimmed up, now we're gonna put the foot down and stitch out the next stitch, which is gonna be the placement line for the fabric. Here we go. Okay, so now's the fun part. I'm going to take our block and I'm going to place it on and around that placement line. It's going to be almost an exact fit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that it's going to fit on there. And if it, does, if it misses the tack down, which it might. Let's put my foot down and find out. Yeah, see, it's going to miss the tack down. That's interesting. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry too much about it. It is centered in that placement line. It's not necessarily going to catch all the way around. Hopefully it will, but I'm going to use my stylist, or you can tape just to keep it into place. And if I need to stop it along the way, I will. Hopefully it's gonna catch the edge on most of the part, just enough to keep it in place for us to do the quilting. It doesn't have to tack down if it misses an edge. It just needs to tack down enough that we're going to be able to hold it in place while we quilt. But if it doesn't, I'll show you a little trick afterwards. But let's see what it does, here we go. Okay, it's not tacking down. That's okay. I'm going to keep going and see what it does tack down. Okay, it only tacked down just about an eighth of an inch on this side and it didn't even get anything up on the top. So, oh, it did get a little bit down here on the bottom edge. So what I'm gonna do, this is my little trick of the trade. When it doesn't tack down anything with that stitch, I'm just gonna use my stylus that I've, like I've shown you in previous videos. While it quilts it out in places that it's going, to make sure that this block doesn't move. Once it gets a little bit of quilting done, it's not gonna move at all, okay? And I know it's not gonna move here and it's not gonna move here. So I'm just gonna use this as a guide to keep my fingers away from that moving needle 
until it gets enough quilting down that I know it's not going to move. And then we're fine. All right. So let's put the foot down. This is my favorite part. We're going to do the quilting. Same color thread up on top. It's a six minute in real life stitch out. Here we go. That is so pretty. I love the fact that one landed literally dead center in the middle. That's so cool. All right. I love the way that turned out. So now we're going to do this again. All right. Let's go to the screen cam and it says it's finished embroidery and I'm going to click. Okay. I have the hoop off the machine. So my carriage is going to move. That's fine. Now I'm going to go to the home button and I'm going to delete the selected pattern. I'm going to go back to embroidery, back to my flash drive, back to quilting through the seasons, back to the quilting designs, and now I'm going to go floral. Okay. And I'm going to pick the floral six by six inch design for my second block. I think that's going to be pretty. I'm going to click set. Okay, so it brought it in center. I don't have to do anything to it. I just click embroidery. Okay, so let's go back to the hoop cam. Okay, so now I'm going to go over and take this block out of the hoop and I'm going to reload my hoop with poly no show mesh stabilizer and we're going to do the same technique that we just did to stitch out the second block. So if you'd like, you can rewind this video watch it again and follow the steps along with me. I am going to fast forward through this stitch out so you can still visually see me do it, but I won't walk you through step by step like I just did. So you do have the steps, just rewind it and follow along with me to stitch out the second block right here, which has the taupe in it. All right. So let me go load my hoop. Okay, so I've reloaded my hoop, my eight by eight inch hoop with a poly no show mesh. My machine says the carriage of the embroidery unit will move, which is going to be fine. Perfect. So it centered it. Now I'm going to follow the same steps, but I'm going to fast forward through. So here we go. Placement step for the batting. Okay, you see what happened with mine? Not a big deal. We can fix it. It grabbed two corners. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take those stitches out where it pulled up the corner, just like that. And over here, just like this. I'm going to actually turn it a little bit so I can get to one more stitch. All right, just like that. So now the corners are down and now I'm just going to make sure that while it's quilting, it doesn't bring those two corners up, which it should not do. Okay. But we're going to use our stylus to make sure that that doesn't happen, but that's how you can fix it. If something like that happens to you. Okay. So let's put the foot down, hold the block down with the stylus if you need to in certain places 
and let's stitch out the quilting. It's a four minute and real life stitch out. Here we go. That's really cool. Isn't that amazing? All right. Cool. So let's take the hoop off the machine. Let's take this block and the first block you did over to the table. And I'll show you how to finish up these blocks. Okay. These blocks were a lot of work, but they turned out really cool. So now the last thing we have to do is just measure these blocks and make them six and a half inches by six and a half inches square. And there's really no outer stitch line, but I'm going to just pretend the outside edge and we're going to measure and see if these blocks are going to be six and a half. And I believe they are. Yes, just shy of six and a half. And just shy of six and a half. So we're going to be good. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do the same thing as if I would have an outer stitch line. Okay. Because remember it did try to tack it down, but the fabric wasn't large enough. Right. So it only tacked it down in a couple places. So I'm going to just line it up with the outside edge of the top of the block. And I'm going to make my first cut, which is basically just all stabilizer. Okay. This block will be fairly easy to work with. Okay, so now I'm going to just take it to the 16 on my mat. I'm going down from 24 to 1, so I'm on 16, and I'm going to go to 10 and a half. And I'm basically lining it up with my mat, okay? And I can just see where the stitch line would have been underneath there, and I'm going to trim off that stabilizer. And don't worry about this little extra like tack down of the thread here. That's all going to disappear in your seam allowance when you sew these blocks together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and look at the outer stitch line here. Line it up with your ruler down here because you know this edge it is now straight. And I'm going to go right to the edge and make that first cut. Okay. What should have happened probably in this block is in the very beginning, they should have cut the fabric larger and allowed for that in the assembly of this block. So when you did the quilting on top, you would have a little bit extra fabric on the sides, but the way it was assembled in the hoop, I think that would have been, um, a challenge to do to get these fabrics the right size and the right proportions. So I think that's why they did it the way they did. But that's okay. We can make this work. We can. So I've got that edge. I'm going to go to 11 and a half. Can I see that stitch line? Yes, I can. Right underneath there. So it's not pretty, but it's a six and a half inch square block. Like I said, this will fall into the seam allowance. You will not see that at all. Okay, so that's cool. So now let's do the same thing real quick to this one. Because remember we had two of them in this quilt. One with green fabric if you had the kit and the one with the taupe. So I'm just doing the exact same thing to get this block to also be six and a half by six and a half. And I can see that stitch line. And there we go with that side. And you can reuse this stabilizer. You can actually sew a second piece to the side of this and sew it with a zigzag and you can use it for in another block. So I always save pieces that are that large. You can definitely use them in another project. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the edge, line it up with this edge because we know that that's straight. 
And can I see the stitch line? Yes, I can. Okay. And come back here. Do the same thing. Align the ruler up with this edge because we know it's straight. And on the mat, we're going to go down to 11 and a half because I'm on 17 over here. Can I see that stitch line? Yes, oh, I can. And you did it. You absolutely did it. Aren't those cool? Like I said, a labor of love, but those are really cool blocks. How about that? Good job. So I hope you had as much fun today making these two blocks as I did. And I hope you stay tuned here on Jolly Molly TV for more fun and more blocks in Kimberbell's cute project, Quilting Through the Seasons. Until I see you next time, take care and happy stitching. Bye-bye.